Dr. Donald Fabio and welcome to Spotlight on Berkeley Heights, the pulse of the community. This is a special edition show about our veterans. It's Memorial Day 2017 and we're going to have our Memorial Day celebration inside this year because of the weather isn't quite the greatest. But what is it about? It's about never leaving a fallen comrade behind. It's about serving our country, service before self, giving to others. It's about putting the mission first, semper fi, welcome home. Those are the mottos of our service men and women that have made this country great. It's all about them today, remembering and never forgetting. Let's go to the Memorial Day service. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, Post 6259, Berkeley Heights Town Council, Special Events Committee, and the Berkeley Heights Veterans Memorial Park Committee, I'd like to welcome all of you to gather with us today, especially considering the weather, for what this day really is all about. Our theme for this Memorial Day is honoring our hometown heroes. And as I see these new hometown hero banners going up around town, I'm humbled by the names, many of which I know, who answered yes when needed by their country. You know, we get so inundated by the marketing that raises up heroes like Superman and Batman and X-Men and others that we need to be reminded that real heroes don't wear capes. They wear dog pants. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the Senators, our state senators, provide us with a a copy, of, or excuse me, uh, of the flag which flew over Trenton the day he died. Uh, it was sent to us by the governor, and uh, it says, "The things we are passionate about tell us what we are." And that was Leon. So why don't we have the girls come on up, please? He's a very passionate man. On behalf of the veterans and the committee, we want to present you with this flag. Thank you. Well, we couldn't do anything with the rain, so we have to adapt. And you don't need to talk to the military about how to adapt. Right, This past uh, week, week and a half, walking around town looking at these banners. Um, many names looking familiar, dads, uncles, grandfathers, you know, young kids who I just watched play ball at GL four or five years ago. And I thought to myself, everybody's got a story. Everybody up there has a story. And, and you think back and you think about 
what this country is. Millions have served in this country. Many didn't come back. We're here today to address that, to address those who have sacrificed their lives, but equally to address those who sacrificed a portion of their life to step up when asked to serve. And I thought, those millions come home, and there's no books about them, there's no movies, right? there's no articles. They just become citizens. <coughs> the late Stephen Ambrose, who basically wrote the screenplay for Band of Brothers, wrote a book, Citizen Soldier. And it was about the American soldier, the fact that they are just citizens. They're called on, they stand up, and they go, and they fight. Many don't come back. Those that do just become citizens again, almost an anonymity, if you would. And as I looked at those banners, I thought, this, this is going to bring each of these people right with us. You know, and, and you talk to some, I talked to a couple people and they said, that's my dad. And I thought, this is what this country is. And as I looked at the various banners, I thought of an individual that I had met recently, and I singled him out, not to make it nothing special, but just to show how average he was. Andrew Haspel was 21 years old when he enlisted in the Army Air Corps, the forerunner of today's United States Air Force. Mr. Haspel flew 25 missions as a bombardier over Hitler's fortress Europe. He was 23 at the time. He was the oldest individual on his plane. Now think about that. The oldest individual on his plane. The 8th Air Force lost 26,000 airmen in World War II. The life expectancy of a B-17 was about 10 missions. He made it through 25. Won the Distinguished Flying Cross, various air medals, and then came home. And no one knew about it. Right? And I walked into his home about two months ago on a Meals on Wheels thing, and there he was, he's 99 years old. And he's struggling. But he still knew what he had done. And I got to talk to him about it. And I said, this, this is what America is. These are the millions that just came home and just said, well, back to being a citizen. I did what I had to do. There were no books written. There was no movie produced. There was nothing. But it didn't matter. Because that's what the American soldier does. He steps up, she steps up, they do their job, and then they come home. If they're lucky, they come home. <clears throat> now, as I said, everyone has a story, and what the group that I'm about to introduce, uh, one of the main players in that group, a dear friend of mine, what this group has done, and it really was a segue from the project across the street, and, and Ted and, and his, his group uh, did such a tremendous job at that. But now we kind of go to the next step, and now we've got banners that will appear at or about Memorial Day weekend, at or about Veterans Weekend, and they're a reminder. They're a reminder to all of us that there's a story on every one of those banners. And whether that story is a 27-year-old kid now in Afghanistan or a 99-year-old man who flew as a bombardier 70 years ago, there's a common theme. It's about liberty, it's about freedom, and it's about a desire to step up when called upon to serve. Thank you. our nation celebrates the memory of those who gave their lives in defense of the United States. Let us beseech your almighty blessing, not only upon them, 
but also upon those who answered the call to duty and have since passed from this earthly life. Further, Lord, may we ask that you strengthen the living brothers and sisters, those currently serving our nation in uniform throughout the world, and those whose service has ended, those who have borne the burden of defending our citizens and allies, our veterans. We especially ask a blessing on those who now carry permanently the physical scars and the invisible wounds of war. Combat veterans, may you smile upon those soldiers, sailors, and airmen who have left us to dwell with you forever in heaven. Comfort them in your boundless love and mercy. And may that love and mercy bring unending courage, honor, and commitment to those Marines that guard the heavenly gates in the streets of heaven above. We ask that you bless the citizenry of Berkeley Heights, and we call down the blessing. God bless America. Thank you for coming. Uh, I will now read the names of Berkeley Heights residents who, uh, at the last full measure service of our great nation, having died in battle in World War II. Uh, they gave their lives so that each of us may continue the benefit of freedom and enjoy the United States. Brother Lewis Bert Miller. Anthony V. Sabisco Jr. I apologize if I've messed the names up, so. James J. Doduka. Vincent Herbst. Henry J. Pickle. Henry L. Seidenhoff. Ralph Swerdall. Gleason Patterson. These names can be found on the World War II monuments across the street. Uh, just take a pause for a few moments for them, please. Moment of silence. Over the past, over the years, 104 members of VFW Post 6259 have gone on for final reward. This particular year, four of our comrades joined the ranks. These are brothers of ours that have passed away this year. Fred Cody, Frank Carrigan, James Cuco, and Armin Petulio. Please keep their families and all of us in your prayers. Thank you.
detail, cover. Once you receive this benediction, as we go forward remembering all that has been done for us by our veterans who have served in the past, who serve today, who will serve in the future, they served us to bring to us the civil liberties that we enjoy. May we go forward and remember those civil liberties and live with the distinction and the honor they served with in our own lives as our remembrance of everything they've done for us. May we remember them directly, indirectly, with action, with thought. May our deeds reflect our gratitude. And may God go with you all. Our Grand Marshal today for the 2017 Memorial Day Parade in Berkeley Heights was Douglas Thomas Garno. Douglas, what did it feel like to be Grand Marshal? I was quite frankly overwhelmed. I, the, the fact that you picked me in the first place, uh, I, I'm dazzled, but uh, it was a wonderful honor and I really appreciate everybody that did what they did for me and, and uh, my wonderful comrades at the VFW. Well, you know, 21 years of service in the uh, Air Corps, that's really something quite honorable. And how can we not make you Grand Marshal uh, with that kind of service? Well, actually, it's the U.S. Air Force now. The, the song still says Army Air Corps, but it's actually U.S. Air Force since 1947. Well, there you go. Thanks for correcting me on that. Now, seriously, how important is it, in your opinion, for our youth to get involved with the service? Well, as I... As I uh, tried to emphasize at the end of my talk. Uh, I've seen some, one of them including my grandson, was trying to look for a career and I frankly think if he would have been there and, and experienced some of the wonderful tech schools and the discipline that you gain, uh, <clears throat> it did wonders for me. I didn't necessarily need the discipline at the time, but I <clears throat> thought that I, never, as I said, never have to go in the service at that time, uh, that was favorable to me because I wanted to get on with a career. But once I was in and the wonderful friendships I made, the training I had and uh, experiences, travel, the whole thing was, was uh, incredible. And uh, I'll never forget it. And uh, it, I think of it every day. And uh, as I said, I still go to reunions with the Air Force buddies, although there's not too many of them left from my era. Uh, we lost some wonderful guys in the last couple of days. And, but uh, <clears throat> I started reunions again in Burlington, Vermont, a couple of years ago. And then we went to San Antonio, and we went to Wright-Patterson Field in Dayton, Ohio. If you ever get a chance to see that museum there, it's incredible. They've got four hangars with every aircraft that was <clears throat> every produce, missiles, from the Wright brothers on to the, you know, X-15s. Uh, in fact, one of my old roommates... Uh, <clears throat> fellow named Pete Knight uh, became th one of the last X-15 pilots, and he uh, still holds a speed record of over 6,500 miles an hour. <laughs> and he also got astronaut wings because he went over 50 miles high. I wonder if he did that was authorized or he did that on his own. <laughs> no, and him, he probably did it on his own. He was an incredible guy. So, but that's what it's all about: being in the service, is experiencing life, giving back, and making a difference. Yes, I, 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 as I said, I still live with it today, and, uh, and I do encourage anybody that's, uh, and some of the young people that are not quite sure what they want to do yet, it's, it's a wonderful experience. Uh, it's one you can't buy, really. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay, thank you very much. Well, hey, let's see your plaque from uh, the Grand Marshal for the 2017 Berkeley Heights Memorial Day Parade, Dr. Thomas Douglas, Thomas Garno. Thank you very much for your service. Well, thanks, thanks so much, and it's, it's been a pleasure meeting you people, and, and uh, uh, thanks so much again. Appreciate it. God bless America.
of 6259 is all about becoming affiliated with the veterans. Now, Midge Vincendes, were you, did you serve in the service? No, I did not. But I have family, and as we all have, many friends and family who have given the ultimate sacrifice for all of us. And when this opportunity came to me, it just seemed like something that I was so grateful to be able to do. It's something that in town, our post is a treasure. And the veterans who run that post need our help. And so we, as a community, want to step up and do whatever we can to be a friend of 6259. There you go. I couldn't have said it better than myself. It's time for us to step up and help our veterans. Midge, you're leading the way. I wanted everybody to hear the reason to do it. And that's the reason. Thank you very much. Thank you, doctor. I know that Midge Vincendes is a big supporter of the friends of uh, 6259. It's a layperson, shall we say, a non-veteran getting involved. If other non-veterans want to get involved with the friends, who do they reach out to? Is there a contact person? Well, I, right now I'm the contact person. And how do they get in touch with you, Steve? Well, they can call me at home. They could write if they want to write a note or if they fill out a form, it'll come to me uh, through the post. My home phone number is 665-6896. And, um, there you go. He's the point person for the Friends of the VFW. Midge is behind it. Gay Hollowell's behind it. We need other citizens to step up and help the veterans. Dennis Ryan was the chairman of the Memorial Day Parade and Ceremony. Uh, Dennis, are you a veteran? Oh, I'm not. I w I'm not going to say I wish I was, but uh, I, I was not able to serve for a but, number of different reasons. However, you were in charge of the parade. You were in charge of the ceremony. You made sure the flag got uh, brought down to half-mast at 8 a.m. and gets raised back up to full-mast at noon. Why, Dennis? Well, there's a, there's a number of reasons, but I think the major one that I think of is the fact that uh, while I wasn't able to serve, my father did. My father served in World War II. And uh, he served in the South Pacific, just off the coast of Japan. And I don't think I ever really respected and appreciated what he did uh, and what so many of these guys did for our country until later in my life. And as a result, um, I threw myself into the Memorial Day Parade a number of years ago just as an assistant. And since then, it's just worked up to, you know, working, uh, working the day. Yeah. Well, so. servicing our servicemen and women. My father served, uh, let's see, I, he's kind of with me. He passed away five years ago, but uh, the tie that I have on is uh, the RCA nipper tie. And my father worked for RCA for 47 years, and this is one of the things that he left to me. So uh, I wear it every Memorial Day so that uh, he can continue to still be a part of the day. God bless you, Tom, uh, Dennis. We appreciate your serving. And remember, when you see the servicemen and women, active duty or retired, give them a shout out. Give him a big smile, a handshake, and a thank you. Amen. Thank you. Always remember, never forget, our leadership of the Township Committee, Mayor, President, Vice President of the Township Committee, thank you very, very much for putting this together and making it happen. Uh, Vice President Kingsley, what are your thoughts about the Memorial Day event today? Uh, it was an absolutely beautiful tribute to all of those that served. Um, as disappointing as it was to not have the parade, actually I found it um, really more somber um, and more meaningful inside because you really, it, it was just, you really got the feeling and you really had a little more time to reflect um, and take in what the t today was really about. Um, and it made much more of the emphasis on our vets as you sat there and you saw the men sitting up there in, in the semicircle. I just think it was a lot more somber and reflective and that's really what today's all about.
It is about remembering, and you know, it brought tears to my eyes when they pulled out taps in that small room. Well, uh, man, it was tough. Uh, Council uh, President Mark Fasher, what do you think? What, what, what do you want the citizens to bring home about the Memorial Day celebration? I think, first of all, Doctor, it was great that while it was raining, it certainly didn't dampen the spirit um, of this Memorial Day celebration. As Gene just said, um, going inside the bagpipes, doing amazing grace taps, it was very powerful. It was great to see the men and women up on the council dais taking their rightful place as the honorees uh, today. And it allows us to remember what this day is about, a Memorial Day for those that have served us so ably and allow us to stand here today in freedom. So great day, great day for Berkeley Heights and of course for all of those serving and for our veterans. Hey, couldn't have said it better. And Mayor, you know, rounding out the leadership of our of our township here, um, who made the call to go inside and make it happen and to just go forth and, and accommodate? Well, there was a call that was made collectively around six o'clock this morning uh, when we looked at the the weather forecast, et cetera. There are a lot of moving parts that have to be uh, contacted, including the PAL, the various schools, the bands. Uh, the different groups that we ca that have come that come here every year, they need to be advised. You also have police issues. You have DPW issues. So it, it, we made the call, and uh, it seemed to be the right one, given the fact that it was raining rather heavily around 9:30. So uh, it's it's a difficult call to make many times, and plus, as well as we you know, we have a facility here which uh, had took a lot of rain in the last uh, last you know half a day uh, or so. So we we had a lot of concerns, but it, it worked out as as Gene and Mark said very very well. I think what it really reflects, um, again, it's about this town, yeah. okay? It really is. I mean, that was a packed room over there, uh, and, and a lot of people came out because of, of those that had given, obviously those who have given their lives for this country, but more the same as, as those who have served and come home, but also the many people that, that worked to put this on, all right? And I think a lot of people said, look, they, they realize what these volunteers do. And um, we've got to stand up and support the volunteers. Yeah. And I think that's what went on today to a significant extent. It was a great time. And uh, next year, we just hope for better weather. We've got to catch some weather one of these years. Yeah. Yeah. Hometown Heroes was the theme. Check out the banners. Check out the flags. Check out Memorial Park. And remember, because this is what makes America great, is the fact that we'll put down our lives for other countries, for liberty, freedom, and justice. Thank you very much for serving us as well. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio. Have a great day.